Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Now we are going to discuss about hereditary spherocytosis. So hereditary spherocytosis is the most common inherited abnormality of red cell membrane. And the mode of inheritance is autosomal dominant. But some cases have also shown autosomal recessive mode of inheritance. So before going to the pathogenesis of hereditary spherocytosis, we should know the skeleton of red blood cell membrane. Normally, RBC membrane consists of protein known as spectrin. This spectrin has two subunits known as alpha and beta. Spectrin is attached to cell membrane in two different sites. One is the head region and the other is the tail region. In the head region, spectrin binds to band 3 of membrane with the help of enchirin and band 4.2. Whereas tail region of spectrin binds to glycophorin A, which is present in the membrane with the help of protein 4.1 and actin. So we clearly see here that spectrin has alpha and beta subunits. Spectrin attaches to cell membrane in two different sites that is the head region and the tail region. In the head region spectrin binds to band 3 of membrane with the help of enchirin and band 4.2 whereas in tail region of spectrin binds to glycophorin A which is present in the membrane with the help of protein 4.1 and actin. And the most common mutation in the development of hereditary spherocytosis is seen in the protein enchirin. And after the enchirin, the most common mutation is seen in band 3, which is present in cell membrane of RBC. And this band 3 is an ionic channel. So hereditary spherocytosis is membrane disorder. So this will result in loss of flexibility and this occurs due to mutation in enchirin protein. So there will be mutation in enchirin and this mutation can also be seen in case of spectrin protein 4.1 and protein 4.2 and band 3. And we also have to remember that glycophorin protein, glycophorin is not associated with pathogenesis of hereditary spherocytosis. So, glycophorin is not responsible in pathogenesis of hereditary spherocytosis. And severity of hereditary spherocytosis is assessed by mutation in spectrin. This severity of hereditary spherocytosis is measured by hemolysis. And this hemolysis is measured by osmotic fragility test. And all this is associated with spectrin mutation. Therefore, severity of hereditary spherocytosis is assessed by mutation in spectrin. Now we'll talk about pathogenesis of hereditary spherocytosis. So because of the mutation in RBC membrane protein, there will be loss of flexibility. So when there is loss of flexibility, there will be increase in RBC membrane damage. So the RBC changes its shape into sphere. So there will be change in shape to sphere and form spherocytes. These spherocytes have small surface area. They have low surface area and it will be smaller than the RBC. These spherocytes are smaller than the RBC and it will have no central pillar. There will be no central pillar. Now this ferrocyte will now pass through the spleen. When these reaches the splenic sinusoids, they get trapped into the sinusoids. They get trapped in sinusoids and this will be taken up by macrophages system and this will result in extravascular hemolysis. That is the hemolysis is occurring in the sinusoids of the spleen. So the treatment is splenectomy. Even after splenectomy, you will be able to see spherocytes in the peripheral blood. 
सो स्फेरोसाइट परसिस्ट इन द पेरिफ्रल ब्लड इवन आफ्टर स्प्लिनेक्टोमी सो स्फेरोसाइट आर सीन इन सो इट इज सीन इन हेरिडेटरी स्फेरोसाइटोसिस जी सिक्स पी डी डेफिशियंसी थैलेसेमिया पैरोक्सीजिमल नॉक्चर्नल हेमोग्लोबिन यूरिया एंड ऑटो इम्यून हेमोलाइटिक अनिमिया एंड वी हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट स्फेरोसाइट्स आर मोस्ट कॉमनली सीन इन ऑटो इम्यून हेमोलाइटिक अनिमिया नाउ वॉट आर द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर ऑफ हेरिडेटरी स्फेरोसाइटोसिस वॉट आर द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर ऑफ हेरिडेटरी स्फेरोसाइटोसिस सो इट इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय ट्रायड ऑफ माइल टू मॉडरेट हेमोलाइटिक अनिमिया पिगमेंटेड गोल्ड ब्लैडर स्टोन एंड इंक्रीज इन इनडायरेक्ट बिलीरूबिन विच विल प्रेजेंट एज जॉन्डिस दिस ट्रायड इज ऑल्सो सीन इन केस ऑफ सिकल सेल अनिमिया बट दी ओल्ड डिफरेंस इन सिकल सेल अनिमिया इज दैट सिकल सेल अनिमिया इट प्रेजेंट्स विथ सीवियर हेमोलाइटिक अनिमिया एंड ऑल दीज फीचर्स विल बी सेम सो इन सिकल सेल अनिमिया देर विल बी सीवियर हेमोलाइटिक अनिमिया pigmented gold bladder stone and increase in direct bilirubin level now coming to the lab diagnosis in peripheral blood smear you will be able to see spherocytes increase in mchc count and there will be increase reticulocytosis so in hereditary spherocytosis there will be increase reticulocytosis but if a patient suffering from hereditary spherocytosis comes to you with decreased reticulocytosis then you have to suspect viral infection most commonly parvovirus b19 the parvovirus b19 they are transient for 5 to 7 days this virus will cause damage to all the stem cells so they will cause damage to erythroid progenitor cells granulocyte precursors platelet precursors and the most commonly affected stem cell is erythroid progenitor cells so erythroid progenitor cells are most commonly affected in case of parvovirus b19 infection so this will result in pancytopenia or aplastic anemia talking about the crisis hemolytic crisis occurs if there is association with epstein barr virus infection and aplastic crisis occurs if there is an association with parvovirus b19 infection now we'll talk about screening test so screening test of hereditary spherocytosis can be done by pink's osmotic fragility test normally rbc is isotonic to 0.9% of nacl normally rbc is isotonic to 0.9% of nacl and in normal rbc hemolysis starts at 0.5% of nacl and it is completed by 0.3% nacl whereas in hereditary spherocytosis pink's osmotic fragility test will be increased that is when hemolysis increases it occurs at more than 0.5% of nacl that is we can say that osmotic fragility test is increased so there is increase in osmotic fragility when hemolysis is not completed even at 0.3% of nacl then we say that osmotic fragility is decreased so this is seen in case of thalassemia how is hereditary spherocytosis diagnosed so the diagnosis of hereditary spherocytosis can be confirmed by flow cytometry there is another screening test that is osmotic gradient ecta cytometry which is used for screening and it is more sensitive than pink osmotic fragility test and they are best for newborn baby whereas eosin 5 malamide test it is a dye so eosin 5 malamide is a dye which is used in flow cytometry to confirm the diagnosis